I'm going to show you exactly how to use React Context for your global state management in Next.js 13. In this app folder, I'm going to create another folder called Context. Within there, I'm going to create a store.tsx file. This first thing is really important. So this is how you change a component to a client-side component. Remember with Next 13, everything by default is a server-side component. But for Context to work, it has to be client-side. So at the top of the page, you need to put quotation marks, say use client semicolon. This has to be at the top of the component or this component will not be a client side component. If you put this at the top of your component, Next13 knows to make this a client side component, something that runs in the browser. I'm going to import some things. I'm going to import create context to get context working in Next13. We're also going to have to import use context. We're going to have to use both in the same component. I'm going to also import dispatch set state action because I'm going to be using hooks and use state from react. I'm going to first create some basic context props. First, I'm going to create a data type. Within this data type, I'm just going to say there's a first name that's a string. I'm going to be creating an array full of objects with first names in them. I'm going to create an interface called context props. Within here, I'm going to have a user ID that is a string, a set user ID. And since this is a hook, I'm going to say dispatch set state action string data. For this value, this is where I'm going to use the data type and say array and then set data. I'm going to say dispatch again with data type array. All right. And under that, I'm going to create the global context. I'm going to call it global context. Say create context using the context props. I'll trigger that. I'm going to put some default values. And you can find all this code in the description below. All right, so I have my create context function finished. This next part is one of the differences with uh, Next 13 as well. Normally, you put the provider in like an app file. You'd wrap it around your app. Next 13's version of that within the app directory is sort of this layout function here. But like I said, this is a server side component. So you can't just within this body put the provider here. You can't put a provider here. It won't work because this is a server side component and React Context will only work on the client side. But there is a way to fix that. The way to do that is you have to create the provider within the store file, within the context file, which is a client component. It has to be within a client component. And so here's how you can do that. I'm going to say export const global context provider equals within here, I'm going to say just children. This is going to give you an error message because it doesn't have any declared props. Um, it's just any, but it's okay. You should just ignore this error. Within this global context provider, this is where I'm going to create my hooks. So I'm going to say const user ID. These are the hooks. These are the variables that I want to be accessible globally. The use state empty string. I'll go ahead and create a data variable and I'll put an empty array here as an option or data type array. I'll trigger that use state and just put an empty array within it. Then under here, I'll return. I'm going to return this global context with the provider with these as the values. So let's go ahead and do that. Global context dot provider value equals, and I'm going to put all the values that I want to be accessible. And I'm going to put all the variables that I want accessible globally. And within here, this next part's important too. put children between curly braces. And the way this is going to work is we're going to eventually import this store into the layout file. And you'll notice in the layout file, it has children. The way this is working on the back end is each time you create a new page within the app directory, that's like a child. And so once we import this into the layout, all the values within this provider are now going to be accessible to all the children within the app directory, which is just another way of saying all the pages within the app directory. All right. And under there, I'm going to export const 
I'm going to create a function called use global context. So this is the part where I said, you're gonna need to use context within the store. And I'll use the context here. And within there, I'll say global context. So this is also important. It's important to put this within the store as well. And now in all of your pages, you're going to be able to import this global state. All right, so we'll go ahead and move on to layout. This again is sort of like the app file for next 13 that you would normally house all of your pages within. At the top, I'm going to import the global context provider. And even though this is a server side component, it will still work fine because the store is a client side component. And so since we created everything within the client side component, you can still use this global context provider within this layout server side component and everything will work properly. So here I'm gonna say global context provider and within the provider, I'm gonna put the children. All right, and so now our global context is officially set up. We can now access our global state within our pages. To do that, I'm gonna open up the page file. I'm gonna delete this whole main function and the footer. I'm gonna delete this image. I'm going to import a use effect. We're gonna use a use effect from React. And I'm also going to import this use global context from the context store. Oh, and I forgot again, every page is a server side component by default. So you wanna make sure you change this to a client side component or this will not work. And it's actually true for all React hooks, like use effect, use state, things like that. Those are client side components. So for context to work, you have to say use client at the top of the page. And again, I won't go into all that again. If you're kind of confused by this, you can watch the crash course in the description below. I go in detail about how client side components, server side components work. All right, so within this home function, I'm going to say const, I'm gonna go ahead and import everything. User ID, set user ID, data, set data equals use global context. And now I have access to this global state that I saved in my context store. And just to show you that it's working, let's create a use effect. We're gonna give some values to each of these and we're gonna have those values show up in the return statement. The first thing I'm going to set is the user ID. I'll just say two and then I'll set the data. I'm just gonna put three objects here uh, with first names because in our store, the data data type only has a first name in the string. So I'll say Tim, Michael, Kyle. All right, and within our return statement, I'll create a P tag. I'll just uh, say user ID and I'll return this user ID variable and I'll say first names. And under that, I'll create a map function. I'll say data.map, E for element, I for index. I'll use the index for the key for this P tag. And within the P tag, I'll just return E dot first name. All right, and everything should be working. I'm gonna open up a terminal and say npm run dev to make sure everything's working. Okay, so I'm gonna open this up on localhost. And there you go. As you can see, there's the user ID showed up, the first names. So that is how you add context to your next 13 apps. That is how you can manage your state globally. Again, the code for this is in the description below. What do you think about this new system? Do you think it's kind of annoying to have to switch to client side components just so you can use React hooks? Or do you think the changes are worth it to have server side components by default? Me personally, I think it would be awesome if somehow in the future, the next team could create a way for the server side components to work with client side components too, like use state, things like that. Not sure if that's possible. Maybe Next13 could just know if you're using a React hook, it's a client side component without having to put this use client at the top of the page. That would probably make things a lot easier. If Next13 just automatically knew anytime you use a React hook, it's a client side component, then context would just work too. And there wouldn't be as much of a learning curve. But on the other hand, it's not that big of a deal adding in use client at the top of the page. It's pretty simple once you learn how to do it, in my opinion. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon if you'd like to see more videos like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.